Um, all right, so we'll just jump into the topic for the week, which is brush management. And if you're, and this is definitely gonna be more geared towards people that live in environments that are similar to um, central Missouri, where I'm sure a lot of you out there are in places that are similar to, to, to here, where left to its own devices, everything just wants to grow back in the woods. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not like an arid environment where plant spacing just increases and it turns to desert without some sort of management or intervention it's it's the exact opposite it, it won't it won't <laughs> maintain for the most part as pasture it'll slowly get colonized by some woody shrubs that eventually give way to full full-blown trees and then you just have you know white oak forest where you once had pasture over a number of decades mm -hmm. um so in order to in order to maintain a grass-based ecosystem on the the vast majority of your land, I mean, the animals are a huge part of that, but then there's also management on your part, whether that's using the animals in a specific way or other management techniques that we utilize and we thought about, about how, how you can sort of prevent that inevitable slip or descent into, into just basically unusable brush and ultimately timber in several decades or whatever. But there's like a lot of different categories, right? Like we can, so we can sort of jump in this from a bunch of different angles. I don't know if you got a place you want to start or... Um, start with thorn trees. Yeah. Just because uh, sure. of that. It's a good topic. Um, a lot, of, so here in Missouri, in central Missouri, the honey locust and the, well, like I guess hedge is technically a thorn tree. Yeah. And like, Black locusts, all of those. We don't have a ton of them here, but really. I'm, I think they're more common in other okay. places. Yeah, the honey locust is the big one, and those those trees will come up very, you know, all over the pastures. Almost every pasture has honey locust sprouts about two foot tall. It'll come up, and uh, if left to their own devices, they will they'll be six foot tall in three years, and then by that point, you gotta either bring a chainsaw or some. You really have to bring a chainsaw to get them, you know, to cut them down. And so there's a couple different ways that we kind of manage that through, through uh, and, you know, here at Green Pastures Farm. Um, one is to just let a few trees go, you know, let, let a few shade trees grow up because yeah, the thorns are awful to deal with and they, they hurt like crazy. I stuck my foot oh, in really bad, really bad the other day. Yeah. Um, and uh, so uh, they're really a pain to deal with, but as far as the shade, they have what it's called like dappled shade, isn't it? Is yeah, dappled yeah. shade or what, per, I don't know. A indirect shade, I don't know what, yeah, shade, what, what the real some technical term is it. for it. So it lets a little bit of sunlight through, but then there's also shade. And so that allows a lot of grasses to grow, you know, right up to the base of the tree because they're getting still a little bit of sunlight. They're not completely blocked out. Plus their leaves aren't big enough to choke out grasses when they fall. Yep. And so um, they're really good as like a savanna tree or whatever. Um, plus they also have like bean pods or it'd be called yeah, a bean like, a pod, seed pod. like a seed pod and they drop those every fall, I think. Yeah. yeah and there, there, there are some, there, I think it just depends on the tree. Cause there yeah. are some trees that, I mean, they just drop tons and tons of those. Yeah. I think it also depends beans. on the year And too. Yeah, I bet it depends on the year too. I bet it's a, it probably is like some sort of a masting, a yeah. masting process or whatever, but. And those, those seed pods are super high in sugars and the cattle just go nuts over them and they'll eat. You know, it's good, really good feed for the cattle mm -hmm. and the wildlife as well. The deer love them too. And so having a few of honey locust trees, you know, spread out across the pastures, if that tree is wanting to grow and it's in a good spot and, you know, it's going to offer a little bit of shade where you don't have any shade, maybe think about leaving, letting one or two grow up. I mean, obviously don't let them all grow up because it'll be a thicket. Um, but a couple of them is not not necessarily a bad thing. It could be a really good as thing. As long as you just don't drive underneath it with a with a four, you know, wheeler. four wheelers or trucks or anything, and maybe try not to walk underneath it either, because or just make be real careful. There's a lot of thorns that drop, um, and I guess there's a chance of like cattle getting stuck in it. But, but we've yeah, never that. seen it because they they yeah. hang out underneath honey yeah. locust trees all the time. And it, it's one of those things it. like a honey locust. Is so sharp that as soon as they touch it, I'm sure they they can just feel let it. their foot right Plus off. Plus, of it's it. it's not like it's got barbs or anything, so it's not like it sticks into you. It slides out pretty well. So I think that like that yeah. Although there are there are some barbs that'll be like 
yeah, barb, but, and then like little I mean, barbs like, coming as off. As far as like the yeah, the, the, and it, it's and smooth. The little barbs are like pointing the wrong pointing, way. Yeah, yeah. They're pointing so that if you take it out, it, it'll slide out. Yeah, it's not like pointing like that. Backwards. That would be awful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't even imagine like a porcupine. Quill. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, maybe leave a few of the trees. Another another way to kind of manage like the rest of the sprouts is either you can you know use like loppers and you can go out there and just cut them when they're you know smaller two foot tall yeah. or whatever lopper size and then we usually paint the stumps with it's a mix of what five gallons of de red, red diesel, diesel fuel mixed with a quart of crossbow concentrated crossbow which is like a weed killer and then you mix that up together and then we just take a little paintbrush and we'll paint just the stump or just the stob that we've cut and um that usually does that does the trick it kills it as long as you do it within 30 minutes of cutting the tree i think it's three hours three hours oh, yeah was, okay yeah uh, yeah three hours you, you should do it up right after you, you cut it. Wait yeah. two days Don't because yeah. what happens is as soon as that tree is cut it begins the descent of its sap into the tips of its roots because it's like a protective measure and so if you get it in there right after you cut it it draws that crossbow down the roots with the sap and just kills the whole plant and so yeah. Um, get it as soon as you can after you cut it and obviously like for if you're in organic production like mm -hmm. you can't use that because yeah. it's a it's it's an herbicide mm -hmm. um but i don't know the only thing i've heard about would people using sort of similarly is like high concentrations of vinegar yeah um i don't know how effectively that works but i've, I've heard people using it um if not i mean you could always just keep cutting them yeah it's not like they're gonna yeah they're just gonna keep coming up so as long as you understand that you could that's how you can manage it but if you're not in an organic certification program or whatever and you can use it it's one of those things where like the amount of detriment that you're incurring into the ecosystem by put by you know introducing that synthetic toxin or whatever is probably minuscule in comparison to like the results that you're going to get as a whole in maintaining that you know, as opposed to turning yeah. into a it's really like a personal a thorn thing. Thicket. If it's something yeah. that really bothers you, then don't do it. But yeah. it's not like, like yeah. some people will spray that straight crossbow yeah. on a tree to kill it. And so like we're not doing that. We're just, just taking, just a, little taking a little brush. dab, painting the stone, trying to get just that tree that we cut, you know, not yeah. to, not get crossbow on anything else. Yeah. Um, it's nasty stuff to work oh, with. It's so nasty. But yeah. But gotta wear gotta wear a plastic glove. It keeps it so uh, it keeps so like for example if you're clearing a fence line if you use a uh, brush killer which we call it brush killer the crossbow mix um you don't it, it slows the the clearing down to like seven to ten years as opposed to three to four because so you're saving a lot yeah. of a lot of time that way like if you were to yeah. just cut it that that plant that you cut is going to have a lot of root store you know a lot of storage in its roots and it's going to shoot up another shoot really quick whereas if you cut the tree and you kill it it's it's got to wait until another tree you know plant comes in and then grows and so it's like a lot slower progression which is sort of getting into the whole like like um treating the treating the symptom as opposed to treating the cause of a problem which is which is kind of interesting to think about because at the end of the day yes the crossbow does work at killing mm -hmm. the plant but the reason the plant's there is because the conditions are such that that plant wants to grow you mm -hmm. know and so unless you dramatically change the that environment somehow th something else is just going to come in and take its place even mm -hmm. though you killed it and so it's this perpetual cycle of you know having to continue to try to kill stuff which in certain situations it, like i don't even really know what the answer to that is as far as the honey locust tree is a savanna species and so mm -hmm. the grass-based ecosystem that you're wanting to cultivate it will always want to grow there. It's not like not you like can, an oak. Or yeah, like if, a if cedar. exactly, if it's some like you know, if it's a uh, like an oak, an oak, hickory. an oak hickory forest or whatever, the honey locust is there's no it has no chance. It's mm -hmm. not it's not designed for that ecosystem. But you don't want that because you're trying to graze cattle. So it's like you, I don't know really necessarily what the what the solution is as far as a causal, you know, like a causal solution to the thorn tree in particular but if you look at cedars for example a lot of that can go back to ph like if you can adjust your ph such that get your organic matter up to the point where it's just not hospitable for the yeah. cedars to grow anymore that's sort of a way that you could 
you know, and the broom sedge, like broom sedge, for example, that's another one. Like it likes more acidic soils or low fertility soils where it's not necessarily worth killing. It's more just worth trying to, trying to fix the, the cause of the problem as opposed to just trying like to cut it off. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, it, it makes, so like the whole honey locust thing, it's like, if it weren't for it being so annoying, it'd be like, it's like the perfect like, tree. As far as like working, it'd be so cool to have like a huge grove of them. Honey so locust like savannah. almost everything is covered, you know, with a hot, like shade, like there's little patches of grass, but then underneath is grass. So the cattle can almost yeah. always are in shade. They've yeah. got tons of those seed, seed pods. Plus honey locust trees fix nitrogen. So it's doing that for you too. Yeah. Um, so that's, it helps the grasses grow even better. Than other than the thorns, it's a miracle tree. I know. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I, but like, I like them but too. It's, it just it's sucks just, to get stabbed it, by them. Yeah, it just sucks to get stabbed by them, and it sucks to pay for new tires every once in a yeah. while. But, man, anyway, that's a, we've already we already had a rant on honey locusts a long time ago. But <laughs> Honey locusts are a cool tree. It's a cool tree. And it's, it's one of the only trees that will grow in heavy cattle environments like yeah if you, have an, it. if you have an environment where <clears throat> you get a lot of cattle pressure that honey locust is going to do fine one because it's got thorns but also because it can take a little compaction on its roots because with if you don't like if you don't have understand the way cattle work if it gets real hot out there and there's shade they're all going to be right there at the shade and so you're getting a lot more compaction which is not really ideal but you're getting a lot more compaction underneath those trees and so deciduous trees like oak or you know hickory, hickory any of any maple those trees it's harder for them to get you know compaction on their roots it's the same way like if you had like a driveway that's you know you put in a driveway right underneath a tree it's going to probably kill, kill the tree. tree um yeah it's kind of the same thing and so but the honey locusts they can take a lot more of that and a lot more of the nutrient load too yeah that a high, lot of nitrogen because obviously they're pooping if they're hanging out underneath that tree mm -hmm. for hours mm -hmm. and hours on end um so yeah i mean they just seem to do really well but yeah and then i guess the other like big we sort of touched on it already but the other big area of brush clearing if if we're not just talking generally about pasture mm -hmm. and i guess before we move away from that yeah let's do the, the brush hog again. yeah brush we can just do a little brief discussion on the brush hog which we've done in the past but i think it's it's just an important thing to, mm -hmm. to cover you know so yeah the, the other alternative to lopping them off is you can brush hog too because the brush hog is going to cut them off whatever height you you know you have your brush hog at we usually run it like eight to, to 12 inches tall a little less six Probably to eight inches six or whatever inches, yeah um you'll still have stobs in your pasture and you can't you can't spread crossbow on them when you do that so they're just going to keep coming back but as long as you have a brush hog you can keep them under control you know as long as you get them every couple of years um it's important also not to have sharp brush hog blades also <laughs> yeah also Greg has rubber filled tires and so yeah. he can't get a flat in his tire. Yeah. So if you, if you have a tractor that's got, you know, just yeah. regular tires, it's you're probably going to get a lot, a of, lot flats of flats doing, doing that. It. So yeah. I wouldn't recommend it unless you had the yeah. solid rubber tires. The reason you don't want to sharpen your, your brush hog blades is because when they're dull and it, it's, I mean, it's moving so fast that even when it's dull and it goes whipping over the top of a thorn tree, it'll cut it off, but it leaves like a shattered, like frayed, almost. frayed, yeah, like frayed end to the stub. But if it's sharp and it goes across it, it'll leave a, a cut point on the end of it, which will just go right through a tire or right through a shoe or right through anything that goes over the top of it. So Greg just, just told us a story though, you know, of, of, I don't know who it was. It was his uncle like his or his dad. dad. Said, don't, don't cut or don't yeah, sharpen, don't your sharpen blade. the blade. Because you would think, oh, it'd make a lot of sense. It's just a lot less effort for the blade to cut. It's going to be easier on the tractor, you know, that whole thing. But it's not worth it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> just let it do its Just work. let it do its thing. Um, yeah, so like, so brush hogging, definitely, definitely a tool. But also, it can be, it's, it's, it's a tool that we both, or at least I think, should be used sparingly as far as you should be careful yeah. about the time in which you're going to be brush hogging and the amount of air you're going to be brush hogging because at the end of the day it's not as selective it's it's more selective than certain things but it's it's not as selective as going around with a with a brush blade on like a, a weed a weed eater or or loppers like you're going to be cutting down all the grass and all the forage at that height mm -hmm. across the entire area you're running your brush hog over and all that area that you do that to needs time to recover from 
that occurring. And so if you do it at a point in the year where you don't get a lot of rain, you sort of, you sort of shot yourself in the foot because you had a bunch of standing forage there and now it's not there anymore and it can't grow back fast enough for it to be useful. So it's, it's definitely one of those deals where if you're going to use a brush hog, I would, I would recommend just using it in areas that are heavy thorn trees where, you know, this is really the tool for the job. If you've got really interspersed thorn trees, just make a day of it and go out there and, and nip the ones you want and maybe leave some that are positioned really nicely or whatever, whatever your, whatever floats your boat, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, like, you know, brush hogging off massive sections of I mean, obviously there's, a, there's other factors to consider because sometimes you're trying to please landowners with aesthetics with certain farms and that kind of a deal. So I get that every context is different, but if you're just talking about a brush management tool and a pasture management tool, I think it's very easy to fall into the trap of, man, that looks so good. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just going to brush hog the whole farm off. It's going to come back really vegetative and it will in ideal scenarios, but it's a roll of the dice every time. Yeah, because you never know when the rains might shut off. Yep. If, if all it says it's going to rain Saturday, I'm going to brush hog this on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Then Saturday gets here, you don't have any rain. And then next Saturday gets here, you don't have any rain. Now you're yep. you know, hurting hurting big time and you don't have the rec you need a longer recovery. And then by the time your cattle get back there, the grass is this tall. And, and then it hurts yeah. your winter stockpile and then yep. you got to feed more hay and like everything just it's a domino effect so, so just be be cautious. Be, be cautious with it be cautious it's a super powerful tool yeah. for for particular scenarios mm -hmm. controlling briars and brambles, brambles is yeah, another big you don't, so the thing with brambles if you turn cattle into brambles they're going to get all kinds of little pricks and cuts and and stuff in and their the, legs it can lead to a black leg. black leg black yeah. leg is a deadly disease that it's a deadly. I think it's like it's, it's like a back. I think it's a bacteria. It's some sort of pathogen in this that lives in the soil or and whatever. And when they get a lot of little cuts and scrapes and any kind of like break in the skin, um, that allows that that bacteria to get into their system, into their bloodstream, and it can kill. Uh, you know, yearling calf in whatever a couple of days. There's pretty much There's nothing you no, can do yeah, once you once they you get do. it. Um, and it always goes after your highest gaining animals, your highest performing, because they're gaining so fast. Something with like yeah, I don't know what the there's like biology the is. I don't know. Somehow it, it well it targets the the best animals in your herd because whatever, I don't know if they're just growing reason. fast. So, it was something with like the blood or like when it grows fast, it like grows into like the muscle. You were reading. About yeah, it, I don't I don't remember though, but but the. It was like sometimes it's I've heard it called overeating disease, which is sort of a misnomer because it's not necessarily from overeating, but yeah. it's the animals that are eating the most and performing the best that end up getting hit the hardest by it. So brambles are not a good deal either, but brush hogging is a really good tool for brambles because it's yeah. really hard to lop, to like lop or manually take care of brambles. A brush blade you could do it. And also the best time to cut brambles is like right is like before they fruit. Yep. Um, and so that usually kind of lines up, I mean, depending on the, the, the place you're at, but that usually lines up with the time of year when you could brush hog because it's going to be raining, there's yep. going to be some moisture, your grass is going to be in that spring flush or late spring late flush. Spring flush. And yeah. So it's okay to take, to, you know, take some brambles, get some seed heads knocked off, and then you're going to maybe have some better pasture. So. Yep. And sheep will definitely take care of brambles, especially when they're shorter. Mm -hmm. If they if they can reach the whole plant, they're, they're they're a good management tool for brambles. Another thing too about the honey locust is they're good grazing for cattle and sheep too. Yep. The cattle will, will go yeah. up there, and even the big trees, they'll go up. You'll you'll see about six feet tall all the way around the tree. There'll be a line where the cattle reach as far as they could to get the honey locust leaves yeah. ripped them off and ate every you know it all and so it's so funny to watch them they're like their heads up in the air nip 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 taking a little bit <laughs> off their tongue off yeah trying to get around a little, little bit of thorns or whatever it is yeah um the it's sheep, pretty cool the though the sheep are do really good with the honey locust because they got little mouths and they just like nibble just pick leaves off of each yep. little branch whereas the cattle <laughs> the they gotta bits, take their tongue yeah. and rip and so they don't they can't really eat the honey locust as well as the sheep can yeah they still will yeah, they love it. So yeah, so brush hogging is a tool. Lopping, like mechanical. Another you know one mean? is the autumn olive. Yeah, that's another for, brush for us. Yeah, for us here. Yeah, autumn olive. Is it autumn olive? Autumn, autumn olive. olive. 
is an invasive woody <laughs> shrub. It grows. It can grow to like a small tree, like apple tree size yeah, or something like they that. They can get big. They can get super big, and they they got these branches that stick all out all over the place, and they'll they'll take an area over really quickly. Um, but again, if you've got a couple that are interspersed in your pasture, the animals will sort of prune them up in an umbrella shape, mm -hmm. which is kind of, and then they use it as shade and they rub on it. Um, and they'll really eat it feed. a little bit. Yeah. Really good feed. The birds, it's really good bird feed, but then yeah. the birds spread it in, yeah. you know, when they eat the berries. People can eat the berries too. Yeah. The berries are super high in antioxidants. Mm -hmm. So there you go. They smell incredible also, too in the spring. If you've got a lot of brush or a lot of autumn olive in your pastures and you you brush hog them, and keep them in that vegetative, two foot tall, new growth stage. The the animals love, love it. Eating like the super high quality feed at that point. Like they'll they'll take the especially sheep. They'll strip it down to the bark, you know, or to yeah. the, the stem. Um, the cattle will, will eat them too eat as much really as they well. can. But again, so not, the deer. It's really good for yeah. the deer as well. Yeah, but it's again one of those things that I would say almost even more than thorn trees can just absolutely take over mm -hmm. if you don't pay attention to it. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's another one to think of, but as far as tools are concerned for, for taking care of brush, your, your, like your small sort of fine tools would be your, your loppers or your brush blades or brush blades is in the, like, it's like a ninja a, star a weed eater. They've got like metal, like a, yeah, like an it looks like a ninja star blade yeah. and it's, <laughs> those things are scary, but yeah, they, they, they're, they're, they're so fast awesome. And they, it can cut anything about that diameter and smaller. Um, so they're, they're a really nice tool for just fine work of, you know, taking out individual plants, really being selective of what you're getting rid of or patches of brambles or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, and then your crossbow also can accompany those two tools, um, to help sort of seal the deal on a lot of things. Um, and then, and then your, and then your, your, your brush hog for sort of bigger, bigger, less selective jobs you could mm -hmm. use a brush hog for. And um, if, and if like. If you're plant, if you're planning to brush hog for the, uh, you know, the seed heads, you know, the you're gonna you're gonna take a lot of the, those trees just yep. as it is. So yep. it's you never want to brush hog twice. No. <laughs> throughout the year, only once. Yeah. Because one thing, it hurts your your recovery. The second thing, it costs money to do. It's like yep. Like for Greg, I think it's like three dollars mm -hmm. an acre dollar an acre or something three dollars an acre maybe yeah something like that. in fuel and and costs to to brush hog and so you got to think about that too um it's just another thing you're you're and soil compaction it's, as it's well taken from your yeah for the taken most from part your business so um especially if you have a big tractor you know yeah. it's it's a lot of weight mm -hmm. even you know even big tires it's a lot of weight on the on all those little, little mycelium microbes. and microbes and stuff like that <laughs> Get off my head! <laughs> yeah, um, it just squishes all the porosity in that top layer of the soil, so it's something to think about. But anyway, um, I don't know. I mean, I'd be curious to see if anyone else has got some. And obviously, like tools, I mean, tools, animals can be used as tools in the in a brush management setting, whether that's through density and trampling. If you got pigs, I mean, pigs can really reset hit the reset button on an area, just breaking up the soil and uprooting everything that's in there and killing mm -hmm. lots of stuff. They're really destructive in that way, but can be useful in getting rid of some really noxious things potentially. Um, mm -hmm. And then, and you know, sheep and goats will, you know, defoliate some of those woody, big broadleaf species a lot better than the cattle will. So you can use that, them as a tool in conjunction with the cattle. Um, so animals use these tools is totally viable. Um, and then obviously unrolling hay is sort of in conjunction with that where you use animal impact, manure, deposition, as well as mixing in with that hay that gets trampled into the ground. It's just changing your soil biology mm -hmm. um, in a direction that you want it to be heading. Um, and so, I don't know, with those sorts of tools, that's sort of, I guess, the gamut of what we've done here to 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 help manage brush, but it's a constant battle. It's not like we've got it all figured out and the brush just sort of stays away and we just graze the cattle and it's all good. That is far <laughs> from the truth. Uh -huh. It's probably the number one category of thing that we do other than manage the cattle and build fences, managing brush. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I'm curious to see what people's thoughts are on it. I don't know yeah, if you've got, 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 got a bunch of questions. you got anything questions. to add? I'm, you got I'm, anything I'm to add? Well, 
No, I mean, I'm learning, I'm, with, I'm learning as much as, like, everyone watching this. <laughs> you, you, have so. you have experience with Brush in Tennessee? <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I mean, it's ve I mean, it's a very similar climate to here. So yeah. Pretty much all the mm -hmm. stuff Same, that's similar here species. Is, is yeah. There. I don't think we have as much honey locusts. I got so. the questions for yeah. you. Yeah. 